Hey, hey, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Shanae, and today I want to share with you my version of black forest cake. It's one of my absolute favorite cakes, and I always say this, but this is true. It's chocolate, it's cherries, it's my favorite mousse filling, and this is not a traditional black forest cake where you will fill chocolate cake layers with whipped cream and canned cherries. My version is a little bit elevated. We're using my go-to chocolate cake layers. I shared the recipe um, a few videos ago, and I also using my white chocolate mousse filling. I shared the video last week. You, if you haven't catched that, go ahead and watch it because I'm not gonna make it today. And I also prepared homemade cherry pie filling. Now, if you would like, you can always use store-bought canned cherry pie filling or even canned cherries. I have a canned cherries here too, just so I can use the syrup for brushing on the chocolate cake layers. Like I said, I have um, very simple but elevated ingredients for my black forest cake. It's not traditional version, but it's nonetheless delicious. So let's get started. So first we're going to slice our layers. I have two seven inch cake layers here and I'm going to slice it into even layers. Peel off this parchment paper and I'm going to use this cake slicer, which is very, very handy. This cake layer is day old. It's always best to handle day old cake because it's not as fragile. And remove this dome. So now we're gonna strain this uh, cherry juice. We just need the syrup. This should be enough. I have all of my cake components ready to go. Have a cherry syrup here, my white chocolate mousse filling here, and cherry pie filling, and chocolate cake layers here. And I am using my turn table, and I placed a cake board right in the center. It will be really easy to fill the cake. And now I'm going to put a dollop of filling and smear the mousse on top so the cake doesn't slide anywhere. And I'm going to choose one of the bottom layers. Make sure it's right in the center so it's easier to fill. Now I'm going to brush on our cherry syrup. I highly recommend using this uh, silicone brush if possible so that it brushes on nice and even. But if you don't have it, you can use spoon. You just have to be very careful not to soak too much in one spot and whatnot, so try to be even. Okay, now I'm going to put a layer of mousse filling. Even it out. And then I'm going to pipe a border around the cake edges to contain the cherry pie filling. And then we're going to put third of the pie filling in the center. I'm going to put a little bit more filling on top. doesn't have to cover the entire thing. You just want to even it out. Now we're going to put the next cake layer and repeat the steps exactly the same way until all the layers are stacked up. Make sure to come down and take a look where it needs to line up perfectly. Good, I'm going to repeat the steps and I will be right back after I finish all the layers. Okay, all the layers are in. I'm going to place my last piece and I'm going to put it the cut side up so that it has a nice sharp edges. It's going to be easier to decorate the cake that way it's already leveled. Again, make sure it's right on the center. 
To make sure your cake layers are stacked on top of each other, you can use the spatula and just run the cake around. This top needs a little bit more filling to make it nice and even. Don't forget to put syrup on the top layer. I almost forgot. I forgot on some areas, but that's okay. Don't make my mistake. Just a thin layer for now, and then we'll finish decorating in a little bit. Basically, we're just crumb coating right now at this point. Now, I'm going to wrap my cake in a plastic wrap and let it set for about half an hour to an hour or up to overnight in the fridge so that the cake stabilizes and it's easier to frost. Otherwise, it might slide and get wobbly. I'm going to wrap it all around. So my cake has been chilling in the fridge for a little over an hour. I forgot to mention that I also like to add a color like this, stainless steel color, just so it doesn't slide anywhere if it was too soft or anything. It's just the extra insurance, not necessary. Now we're gonna carefully unwrap the cake. I'm not the greatest cake decorator. I don't plan ahead, like I don't usually have a vision. So I usually play by uh, how it goes, right? But uh, the general idea I'm going for is to have a little naked style cake with a little bit of chocolate drizzle. If I had uh, fresh cherries, I'd probably put them on top as well, but I don't have uh, fresh cherries. It's not the cherry season right now. Um, but that's another idea. We need to clean this cake stand so it's nice and tidy. Okay, my cake board is nice and clean. Now to uh, frost the cake in the naked style, I will pipe my frosting like so, vertical line like this all around. Now take a tall scraper, turn the cake to spread the frosting all around. Make sure to keep your spatula straight 90 degrees and 45 degrees toward the cake. And with gentle hand. Our goal is not to take frosting as much, but to just smooth it out all around. And if you see any holes, feel free to fill it with extra frosting. And I have a frosting here with a little bit cherry filling. And I wanna scrape it off because I don't wanna have cherry filling around the cake. Looking pretty good. I think it's pretty smooth right at this point. A little bit cake peeking out is fine and the cherry filling is poking out a little bit. That's okay too. I'm going for a rustic look. I'd like to have a little more frosting here. On top as well. Now I'm gonna just level it on top. Okay, this is good enough. I have a ganache here and clean spatula, have everything ready. So ganache, you want it to be nice and runny so that it drips down the sides, but not hot. Because if you pour hot chocolate over your frosting, your frosting is gonna melt and it's gonna create mess. And I really hope this is cool enough to do. If we have an accident, oh my goodness, we'll have to scratch everything and start over. The ganache is nice and cool to touch and it's still runny. If it's too cooled down, then it will be too thick to drizzle. First, I like to run around the edges to have the drips to my liking and then pour it over on top.
Now I'm happy with my drips and then I'll spread chocolate on top. And then quickly spread the chocolate on top so it sets nicely. The reason I like to have a control over the drips is because you don't want all your drips to go all the way down. You want some variation. And this a little too same height, so I'm gonna drip a little more in some places. I'm happy with my drip, so now I'm gonna just run around. Give a little design on top too. I think pretty good, I'm happy with this. Since I have a little extra frosting, I decided to decorate the top with a few canned cherries. They don't have stems, so they don't scream like cherries, but I think it will be really good. I'm gonna pipe a few dollops of frosting and we'll top it with cherries. This step always makes me nervous and wish me luck. I'm loving how it's turning out. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Who's ready to see the cut? Wow, I love the layers. Look so good. Very impressive. How beautiful. Let's give it a try. The cake is so soft and melt in your mouth because of the syrup and it's bursting with cherry flavor and the delicate mousse ties everything together so beautifully. I'm so excited for this cake and I really hope you will give this a try. Let me know in the comments if you try it and what you think of it. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.